Hey folks, Simon here from Simon's Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at and setting up the TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 USB adapter. And this is the Archer TBE400UH. So as we get into the box here, let's explain what this is. So yes, this is a Wi-Fi 7 USB adapter. And so it's probably one of the best USB adapters you can get for Wi-Fi at the moment. Now, because it's Wi-Fi 7, to make the most of this, you are going to want to have a Wi-Fi 7 enabled network. Now, if you don't yet have a Wi-Fi 7 enabled network, then this will still work as Wi-Fi is fully backwards compatible and it will perform at the peak of your current network tech. And then, of course, if you do later upgrade to Wi-Fi 7, then this will be ready for that as well. So we do have the high performance antenna here. We'll see how that works. And and this does have all of the awesome tech that Wi-Fi 7 brings with it, including MLO, which is multi-link operation. And what that means is you will be able to use this to connect to all three bandwidths, the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz bandwidth simultaneously, which effectively is going to, in theory, give you more reliable connections, faster speeds, and lower latency, which is especially important for those of you that want to use this for gaming. So this is compatible with both Windows 10 and Windows 11. The only thing is a limitation with Windows 10 is you, as far as I know, cannot connect to the six gigahertz bandwidth. I think it's Microsoft's way of trying to get you to upgrade to Windows 11. So I'm not totally sure how that would interfere with the operation of this thing. It would still work, but you may not get the best results. Now I have, because this is a laptop, disabled my inbuilt Wi-Fi adapter. And let's go ahead and plug this in. So we'll just connect it straight into the adapter that it comes with. And I'll open the antenna a little bit. And remember, you can also plug this directly into your USB port. If it's already gonna be out in the open, you don't necessarily have to use the included extension adapter. So it's not quite plug and play. What we do need to do is head into the new drive that's just been created for us, that's built into the adapter itself by plugging this in and then access the setup file. So we'll just go ahead and install this. It will just take a moment or two, which means this unit is not quite plug and play, but the installation does only take a few seconds. And now we can go ahead and see our Wi-Fi networks. And yep, all of the networks are visible, including my six gigahertz network and also my Wi-Fi 7 network, network with multi-link operation. I'm currently about 12 feet away from my closest Wi-Fi connection. So let's go ahead and connect to the MLO network. Okay, so I've just connected to the MLO Wi-Fi 7 network. Let's go ahead and refresh the speed test page. Now, what I will say is if I was connected over a LAN cable, so giving me the best possible speeds, I could expect around 940 megabits down with my internet connection and an upload speed of about 110 megabits. So let's see what I'm going to get over Wi-Fi here using this new Wi-Fi 7 adapter from TP-Link. 800 and, oh, it reached about 800 then, 600. So just coming to the end of the first test here, uh, download speed of 472 is, I will be honest with you, a little bit lower than I would have liked to have seen. Upload speed is about max that I can get, so that's absolutely fine of 108. Ping, 13 milliseconds, is actually really good. So for Wi-Fi, I typically expect into the 20s or 30s. Again, that's one of the joys of using multi-link operation, and that's gonna be absolutely perfect for gaming, as you can see here. Strongly recommended this network for gaming with five green uh, ticks. Let's try a second test. Now that hopefully it's settled in a bit, maybe we'll get some better download results. And currently it's in the 800s. Can that stabilize in the 800s? It's not doing too bad at all. This is much better than the first test. 887 megabits download and upload, not quite as what it was before, which was 110. 108 rather, but uh, it's not far off. It's hit 100 just about, and now it's come back down again. 87 megabits per second for upload, and again, another low latency. 12 milliseconds this time. And let's just go for one more test. See how this compares to the first two. And 
I thought it might have hit 900 megabits uh, per second there. It looked like it wanted to, but it has just dropped down into the low 800s. Okay, 849. So pretty close to a wired connection, and it looks like the upload speed has stabilized now at the maximum amount, which is really good. So yeah, this is very, very close to what I could expect from a wired connection. It took a couple of tests to get there. We've still got very low latency here. But yeah, I'm actually absolutely fine with that. I'm impressed with that. And if I just go ahead and lift the antenna up completely, I don't know what difference that will make, but let's do one more test here to see if it makes any difference. And it seems to have made perhaps a negative difference. We're back in the 400s again, as opposed to the 800s. Uh, we have reached, can we get to 600? Yep. Yeah. It's interesting how just adjusting the antenna there has reduced our download speed. So that's something you might want to play about with to try and get the best possible results for yourself, depending on your current setup. But yes, both download and upload have taken a little bit of a hit there, having the antenna positioned completely upright. So it seems these may work best at a possible angle here. Although again, that could just be dependent on your setup. Wi-Fi can be a very finicky thing. Yep, now that I've angled them back down again, will you look at that? The speed has shot right back up again into nearly 900 megabits per second. In fact, 910, which is pretty much the most I can expect out of my internet connection, out of my network connection here at this property. And our upload has also taken itself back into the upper league. Uh, ping has slightly increased this time to 20 milliseconds. I mean, that's still very, very good. Um, but yeah, just having a finicky with the antenna here does actually make the results a little bit inconsistent. So you have a play about with that yourself, see what works best for you. But there we have it. The TP-Link BE6500 um, is what it's colloquially known as. This is though the Wi-Fi 7 USB adapter. And folks, there we have it, the TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 USB adapter. Thank you for stopping by checking out the video. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video.